Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of War Stories. My name is Ryan Smelt, and before we jump into today's episode, I just want to tell you about our fantastic sponsor, Soldier Girl Coffee. So if you have not heard about them, be sure to check out the link in the show notes. It's businessandbrewshow.com slash soldiergirlcoffee. Um, I think there's some dashes in there, so once again, check out the show notes, but uh, fantastic veteran-owned coffee company, and I know what you're thinking. Oh, veteran-owned coffee companies are a dime a dozen. We're veterans. We see them. They're all over the place. It's like when you get out, you need to start one of two businesses, t-shirts or coffee, and I'm going to tell you the difference and why she is a sponsor on the show. So first of all, Carrie was a medic in the United States Army, uh, the best branch that exists, and so she started a veteran-owned coffee company because, uh, number one, it's a female veteran-owned coffee company. There's not that many of those. Number two, she supports stopping veteran suicide, as most veteran organizations do. Uh, however, she does it with fantastic flavors and caffeine boosts. And number three, and one of my most favorite things, because it not only supports her mission, uh, but it's also very unique, is that she sells CBD-infused coffee. Uh, and I realize there are other uh, CBD in, infused coffees out there. However, once again, uh, this is the only female veteran owned uh, CBD infused coffee company uh, that I have seen. And it's the best one on the market. So if you have not tried Soldier Girl Coffee, then be sure to head over there and try it out using the link in the show notes. You get our special discount. So be sure to. Head on over to her website. She has a bunch of fantastic flavors, uh, including vanilla, southern pecan, and many, many more. Uh, so now, jumping into today's episode, uh, we have uh, How We Got Along is the title. So I wanted to talk about this because this is a little bit more generic. Um, but if you haven't listened to Monday and Tuesday's episodes, then be sure to go back and check those out. Uh, we talked about me starting back in white phase after i got recycled uh, we talked about uh yesterday the phase three ftx and a little uh shaving debacle i had with the first sergeant um once again if you haven't heard that be sure to check it out and today we're talking about how we got along um so there's a few different kind of antics uh as it relates to basic training and uh ait that a lot of people are unaware of and so uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is barracks beautification, which took place, I've, I'm pretty sure, every Sunday. And that was basically us doing what we did every single night, clean the barracks, but all day. Um, it's also the day, uh, for example, at night we might buff the floors uh, during the week. Uh, while we were on fire guard, but on Sundays we would strip and wax them. Uh, so basically completely redo the floors. Um, and then you would also uh, tighten the sheets on your bed, uh, chuckle, because most of the time you're crawling under there to shove your hands up under the springs so it holds your hands up in the air so it looks like you're fixing it and then you're just passing out on the floor because uh, because you're so tired because you still have the same sleep schedule uh but sundays there's a a lot less supervision and a lot less structure um it's pretty much just wake up and clean all day uh and that brings me to my second bullet point which is going to church uh so this is where you found uh, even th sometimes the the i almost said the most the least religious person uh in the military would um <laughs> find some type of god because they had all different kinds of chapels um all different kinds of services uh usually passed out on a list um and I, you know, I'm pretty sure with with the way the military works, they're not checking your dog tags for your religious affiliation to make sure that if you're you're going to uh, uh, Catholic mass that um, that it says that on your dog tag. So uh, pretty pretty much uh, once again, 
Um, sometimes it was middle of the road. Uh, it was kind of difficult for me because I grew up Christian non-denominational uh, slash Southern Baptist. And uh, there, you know, these services were, well, it's the military. So, number one, it's a chapel. It's an on-post building. Uh, it's nothing super fancy to talk about. Uh, number two, it's not necessarily got the the small groups and the other involvement and activities. It's pretty much you just show up, you go to the service, you leave. Um, so it might be an hour, it might be two hours, uh, somewhere in there. Uh, and the last thing is, even though I, I put non-denominational on my dog tags while I was in, but uh, going to a service, they didn't really have something uh, necessarily as contemporary. So it was pretty much just Baptist, Catholic, Presbyterian, and so on. Uh, so anyways, I uh, went there. I saw some old friends. I saw some new friends. Um, but... I would, you know, I would go to that, <laughs> I feel like, almost every uh, Sunday. Um, and then, of course, we had the barracks beautification. So, it gets you away from the barracks, away from the other people uh, in um, your training unit for a small period of time. And, of course, you get to go somewhere else. Uh, so, I remember at, at another point, they did have... Uh, I w <laughs> So, so I want to call it a field trip, but it was it was kind of weird. I feel like it was some sort of non-profit or organization or something that just put something on for the soldiers. And I guess they specifically wanted trainees. Um, I don't, don't necessarily remember really the purpose behind it. I just know uh, I think anyone who wanted to go was allowed to go. And so me and I think one other person from my unit went, but... Uh, a handful of people from other training units went, and uh, I remember they had snacks and TVs. I, th I think they had video games. Um, there was also a point where they kind of had us on police call, so, you know, it, it wasn't really that bad, but it was like, hey, you know, thanks for coming out. Here's a bunch of free food and fun stuff for you to do. Like, they had a guitar, so I kind of messed around with that a little bit. It wasn't like anything super crazy or fancy or anything like that but it was it was nice to to be able to put my hands on a guitar while I was in training uh since I, I obviously didn't have that with me um but it was like hey here's all this stuff and kind of a good time to just hang out at this random building somewhere on post or maybe it was off post I don't remember uh oh by the way there's some trash by the road uh, here's some trash bags. Let's go pick that up. So it, it wasn't like it was a lot of time investment. And like I said, I don't remember the specific purpose or the people involved, but it was like we went there. There was there was candy. There was beef jerky. Uh, so that was kind of nice because those are two things you don't really get while you're in basic training. Um, and then, uh, you know, some some TV shows or movies, stuff like that. Uh, and I feel like it lasted a day. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it probably would have been on a Saturday. Um, and then, you know, we went back to our training unit. So uh, that was that was another thing that got us away. Uh, and the last thing, I saved the best for last year, so I'll never forget. Uh, you know, in many training units, there were fights. Uh, we we had our uh, big fight. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know... It, there were times when a lot of us uh, definitely didn't get along, um, and I was never involved in, uh, you know, throwing hands as the kids say these days. But uh, back then, um, I think one of my favorite things about this is, and, and we'll kind of quit in Tarantino this and go backwards, but after the fact, uh, the drill sergeants, I don't think, ever found out about it. I could be wrong. Uh, but both the guys involved graduated with us. Um, so nobody got kicked out. I don't remember anybody getting uh, a counseling statement. Not not that I would necessarily know about that. Maybe they pull them to the side, knock it out real quick, send them on their way. But uh, if the drill sergeants definitely did not find out about this fight, uh, I feel like it's because the guy who got uh, severely fucked up 
didn't tell anyone or, or probably lied about it, you know, because um, I distinctly remember his head coming down on a bedpost <laughs> um, and there being blood. So I find it kind of hard to believe that the drill sergeants wouldn't notice. Um, but I would not be surprised if it turned into uh, one of those loyalty slash prison things where, you you know, uh, snitches get stitches, which this guy might have already needed them. But it's like, oh, I fell, <laughs> you know, getting out of bed. <laughs> so uh, that may have happened, but uh, I just distinctly remember, you know, going all the way back to the beginning. We were in the bay. Uh, we've talked about these bays before. Um, you know, they're pretty open, and on the one side you have all of the bunk beds where everybody sleeps, um, and then you have the hallway, and then you have the kill zone, and the bathrooms, and the laundry room, um, and all that stuff. So, we're in the area where the bunk beds are. Might have been more spread out. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say it was probably a Sunday, because usually we're not all just in the bay hanging out. Uh, also. On Sundays with very, very limited supervision, um, I could be wrong, but I think there was only one drill sergeant there uh, on Sundays, probably at the CQ desk or staff duty desk, whatever it's called downstairs. So um, more than likely, um, it was a Sunday and we were in there and fight broke out. We heard two people arguing and next thing you know, uh, we're in a circle just watching the fight. Um, you know, you don't really want to break it up because you don't want it, it to turn into two against one or two against two or a brawl or anything like that. Um, but these guys had some beef and we let them work it out. Next thing you know, one guy's bouncing another guy's head off the bedpost. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's how that went. And there was blood and then they quit. And, um, I feel like they didn't make up that day. Uh, I don't really remember. Um, but I, I do know, once again, both of those guys graduated with us. And I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure at least one of them, if not both of them, are still in the Army to this day. Uh, so a fight will not end your career. Um, I, I guess, uh, obviously, if you have that option, then don't get in one if you're headed to basic training. Uh, but if you do end up in one, um, you know, maybe just... Uh, approach with caution um the drill sergeants uh can't possibly know everything although i know some people that wear round browns might disagree with me so uh, yeah just just be aware of that um so that was uh that was the one of the highlights of my uh basic training because i was pretty sure we were all all going to get hemmed up get counseling statements and get in trouble and we did not um, so we are continuing on tomorrow, uh, so be sure to tune in for that episode. Um, I hope you find these stories entertaining. As I said before, we will get into more permanent party deployment and other uh, shenanigan type stories. Uh, so be sure to uh, keep tuning in and listening for those wherever you listen to podcasts, whether it's on Facebook, which Facebook does have podcasts now. So. If you're not following Veteran Talk Show, be sure to follow that page and you'll get notified every time we put up either a new podcast episode or a new video. Uh, we put it out on both so you can check those out. Uh, video on Spotify, YouTube, and Facebook, and then podcasts uh, literally everywhere. So Facebook, iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. If you like this episode or you like any other episodes you've heard, be sure to leave us a five-star review. And frankly, even if you didn't, leave us five-star reviews, subscribe to the podcast, and be sure to tell your friends to subscribe as well. My name, of course, is Ryan Smeltz, and I will see you on the next episode of War Stories.